What are you currently reading? I'm rereading a book called Replay by Ken Grimwood. And it opens up with, uh, I read this 20 years ago, and it opens up with a character who's in his late 30s. He dies uh, at 11 o'clock on his desk on page one. And then he wakes up on page two and he's in his college dorm room. And he smells those smells and he recognizes the place and he realizes he can replay his entire life. And so he bets on the Mets and he wins the World Series and he makes a million dollars and he becomes a grillionaire. And then he gets to exactly 11 o'clock on the day that he died and he dies again. And he gets to replay his life again. But now he's a junior instead of a, of a freshman. The time is shrinking. But you can't help but ask, what would you do if you could relive your life again? And I'm just obsessed with this book. I love this book. And it's my, my, pretty much my favorite thriller of all time. What is a book that you could read cover to cover again and again in your life? Uh, I read Watchmen. I read Watchmen by Alan Moore. It really is. That's the, that's the one book beside Replay that I've reread over and over. I read it almost now almost annually. And I always find something new in it. And it's just the one book that I feel is just about the human condition on so many levels. And it's taught me as a writer how to write about the human condition and how to, you know, I think this plot and, and, and that's fine and a good plot is vital, especially in thrillers. But um, if you're not saying something about us as people, then what are you doing? And you show me a book and I'll show you what that author is dealing with at that time, whether they like it or not. It is therapy for all of us. And if it's not, then you're not being honest as an artist. Um, to me, the best thing you can put in your book is yourself. And I know that these books have saved me from so much therapy just by being an outlet where I can express whatever it is I'm, that's going wrong in my life or even write. What book from high school that you were assigned to read stands out in your mind as being influential? I remember being assigned to read Romeo and Juliet. And the reason it was important to me is my ninth grade English teacher, Miss Spicer, was the first person who ever told me I could write. She tried to switch me into the honors class. She couldn't make the switch because I had a conflict and she said, Here's what we're going to do. You're going to sit in this corner for the entire year, ignore everything I do at the blackboard, ignore every homework assignment I give. You're going to do the honors work, and you're going to thank me later. And sure enough, 12 years later, I went back to her class. I knocked on the door, and I said, this is my book, The Tenth Justice, and I wrote it, and it's for you. And she started crying, and I said, why are you crying? She said, because I didn't think I was having an impact anymore. And I said, are you kidding? You have 30 students. We have one teacher. But I remember at that time, Miss Spicer gave me Romeo and Juliet to read. And no one else in the class read it. I read it literally in the corner by myself, read Romeo and Juliet. And it was a book just for me. She picked it out just for me. And then we had to perform it. And the person who I performed it with, I know this will sound so cliche and just Velveeta cheesy, but um, Juliet, who I read it with, uh, was a girl named Corey Flam, who I married. And I married her. And I met her in ninth grade. And Miss Spicer made us read Romeo and Juliet. And I married her one day. And man, I couldn't make that crap up if I wanted to. That's so great. I owe Romeo and Juliet Miss Spicer big.